Every day we are completely surrounded by electricity doing work. In fact, electrical systems have probably invaded more aspects of our lives than any other system. Although we see many devices every day that use electricity, they are not direct examples of electrical work. We don't actually see electrical work, we can only see its effect. It's just like these giant windmills. You cannot see the wind, but you can see the effect of the wind when that fluid work is turned into the mechanical work of rotating the blades. In these same windmills, that mechanical work is then turned into electrical work, which moves the electric charge through the wires. So the lights that are over your head right now, this television that you're watching, and any device that you plug in or run on batteries all operate as a result of electrical work that's being done. The motors in this trolley bus do mechanical work because they use force to move the bus over a distance. Electrical work is done when voltage moves the charge from the overhead wires along these arms into the circuits of the bus. Like fluid systems, instead of measuring how far, we measure how much charge has moved. So electrical work is voltage times the charge. In short form, that's V times Q. For Ralph Burton, moving electric charge determines how well his robot performs. This is an electrical operated robot that does seam welding. Electrical movement or movement of the charges are being done all the time in this type of a robot. There is an electrical charge moving down this line straight to this wire that would determine the well of the robot. This is all that electrical work is, the movement of charge from one place to another. The sparks, the heat, the movement of the motors are all effects of electrical work, not the work itself. Electrical work is all being done inside the wires. It's actually kind of strange that we use electricity in so many different ways, yet no one has ever seen it. Electricity is invisible. Still, we're able to move electricity across the country. So it's important that we know how to measure the amount of electricity on hand and the amount of work it can do for us. Okay, hold it, hold it. We need to pause here for a little demonstration. You just saw some animation that showed electrons going through a wire, and it made electrons or electricity look like little ball bearings. Well, there's two things that need to be said here. First of all, electrons are incredibly small. They're too small to be seen. They're totally invisible. And in fact, they're so small, they can't even be measured. But that's good, because when we move electrons and make electricity, we move a lot of them. Now, the unit of charge is called a coulomb. A coulomb is a million, million, million electrons. Well, how many is that? OK, if I reach down, I can pick up maybe a half a million grains of sand in my hand. So try to imagine a million, million, million grains of sand. How much would that be? I'll give you a hint. This is about a million, million, million grains of sand. Now think about a battery. When a battery is charged, it can be charged to 8,000 coulombs. So that means 8,000 times a million, million, million. That's an awful lot of electrons that are stuffed into this little battery that move from one pole to the other. How many grains of sand would that be? Well, that's more than all the sand that you can see on this desert. In fact, it's enough sand to cover the entire Earth. That's what I call electrical work. You can appreciate how difficult it would be to measure that many electrons. So there's no such thing as a Coulomb meter. Instead, the amount of electrical charge is measured in amperes or amps. One amp is one Coulomb moving past a point in one second. Think of an ampere as counting how many dump trucks pass by instead of counting the grains of sand in each truck. So the amperage of a battery is the amount of Coulombs it can deliver every second or in other words, how much electrical work the battery can do. The voltage is what acts like force to move that charge out of the battery, through the circuit, and do the work. Like other forms of work, it doesn't matter how fast or slow the electrical work is done. The amount of work is still the same. This is what Lee Klaus has to deal with every day when he drives to work in his extremely quiet car. I have one of the cleanest and most efficient cars in town. It's an electric. It has eight batteries in front and eight batteries in back to give me a total of 16 six-volt batteries. Give me a 96-volt power pack 
to operate the electric motor to give me my power. This, uh, this power pack is a very efficient power pack up to a point, but I am limited in my range. So I have to be aware of how far I'm going and allow myself enough power to get back home when I get there. In a gasoline car, you have to be concerned with the amount of gas you have. In an electric car, you have to be aware of the amount of charge in the battery pack and use that charge to get the most efficient amount of work out of the car. The one thing you don't want to do is race away from stop signs or try to show off for somebody who's, who wants to drag with you because this uses energy much faster and it reduces the amount of range you have. So I prefer to start off slow from the stop signs and drive um, at a reasonable speed, save the energy in my battery pack so that I can get some more extra work out of them to run my air conditioner. The work being done by the batteries to drive this car is not all being converted into mechanical work of moving it forward. Some of it's lost as heat, which is generated by the motors. To find out how much work is wasted, or in other words, to measure the efficiency of this car, we can compare the amount of electrical work going into the system and the amount of mechanical work that comes out to move the car. Fortunately, the unit of electrical work, the joule, is exactly equal to the unit of work in a mechanical system, the Newton meter. So if you find how many joules of work the battery is doing, which is voltage times charge, and compare that to the number of Newton meters of work the motors are doing, you get the efficiency. If the joules and Newton meters are the same, the system is 100% efficient. Well, no machine is 100%, but by comparing joules and Newton meters, you can find how much work is lost. Electricity is a valuable and expensive form of energy, so we need to use it as efficiently as possible. We pay for the amount of electrical work that's done moving charge through our homes. And like other forms of work, voltage alone is not enough. There's usually voltage in a household circuit, but electrical work is not done until the current actually flows. <laughs>